Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. everyone. My name is Matt Upton, and I'm the Assistant Dean for Career and Student Services here at the Bush School. Um, as we like to say here in Aggieland, howdy, um, and welcome to our career development session. Uh, I like the little hashtag we have underneath the hashtag adulting, uh, something that all of us uh, are going to have to uh, get to eventually um, in trying to figure out what life looks like moving forward. I'll be going through some information today on career development as it relates to public and international affairs. And I'll be talking specifically about the Bush School here at Texas A&M University. But a lot of this information will also apply to other graduate programs. It may look a little bit different in other places that you go, but it is going to largely be similar across graduate programs in public and international affairs. We work quite closely together. Um, and so we will continue to go through that information. If you have questions, I will try to remember to check the chat feature every once in a while throughout the presentation. Um, and so we'll go from there. Uh, John, great question about the system or way in which the Bush School students or Bush School assist students in connecting with professionals or internships in the student specific interests. Great question. And I promise we'll get to that. Um, if for some reason I don't answer that as directly as you would like, feel free to uh, just shoot me another message and say, hey, you forgot my question. Uh, but I think we'll get to that here in just a few minutes um, as we go through our presentation today. So um, in our session today, as I said, we're gonna talk about career development specifically. Um, obviously the, the goal of graduate school, at least from a professional school standpoint, like public and international affairs here at the Bush School is to help you identify a career path that you're interested in. That doesn't mean that you won't still change jobs and have different opportunities that present themselves as you work throughout your career, um, but we wanna help you identify a career path in public and international affairs. And statistically, 70 to 80% of our graduates go directly into the public sector, meaning they work for federal government, state, local government, nonprofit organizations, international NGOs, those types of organizations. Having said that, some of our graduates do work in the private sector um, and they find other ways to give back to the community. Some of those do that because they work for a government contractor. Others work in a career field that is related to international affairs, public administration, maybe public-private partnerships, those types of things. And still other people work in a completely unrelated field to the public, service, public sector, um, and they find ways to give back to their community through volunteer activities um, and volunteer programming as they work throughout their careers. So today we're gonna to talk about how you get the most out of your school resources. Again, I'll be using the Bush School as our primary example, but as you look at other graduate programs in these fields, I encourage you to check out their resources as well. Uh, we work very closely with other graduate programs in both NASPA for public administration and in APSIA for international affairs. Our students do have an internship requirement between their first and second year in graduate school. And so we'll work with you on helping you identify organizations that you can apply to. We encourage you to come in with the mind of uh, an idea of what you want to do for your internship, but also keep an open mind because there are a lot of opportunities that you may have never heard of before, that you may simply have just never considered in depth. And then you have a conversation with a classmate and they encourage you to look at it or just life changes and you decide that your original plan to move to Washington DC doesn't fit with the life goals that you have at this point or just on the opposite side of that you decide that you were going to live in your home state whether that's Texas or somewhere else and you decide no I, I really want to spend some time in Washington DC and so we encourage you to keep an open mind about both internships and employment opportunities. At a graduate school of public and international affairs like the Bush School, professionalism is very important. And we want to give you opportunities to grow as a leader, to grow as a communicator, to grow professionally. And so we try to provide opportunities to do that uh, by helping you understand what your marketable skills are, what knowledge, skills, and abilities you're developing in the classroom in our graduate programs, 
what knowledge, skills, and abilities you bring to the table. And then also we want to give you opportunities to network. And so, John, that gets to your question at the beginning about how do we help you with that. We're going to help you identify ways to connect not only with the Bush School uh, network and Bush School alumni who've completed the program and are being successful in their fields, but we're also going to give you tools that you can use to connect with individuals from your undergraduate institution and from other professional organizations as you move throughout your career. So a graduate degree can prepare you with marketable skills for a number of public service jobs. And some of these may be very familiar with, to you, depending on what types of opportunities you've considered in the past. Uh, but we've got graduates of our program who have gone on to be budget analysts, program analysts, policy analysts, intelligence analysts, working in risk and compliance, security, specifically cybersecurity. We also have a number of graduates who are now delving into private sector security. We've got alumni who are working for Amazon and Facebook and, and um, Microsoft and other organizations like that, Google, some of those places doing security work, cybersecurity work for them, and also security for the executives in those organizations. So a lot of opportunities in the area of analysis. We've got people who serve as coordinators of communications, someone maybe who did it has an undergraduate degree in communications, takes that experience and applies it to the public sector. Policy coordinators, Homeland Security, a number of our graduates have gone into emergency management, working with disaster relief, disaster recovery, disaster recovery government affairs, um, public health. Um, we do have graduate programs, a joint Master of International Affairs, Master of Public Health program uh, with the School of Public Health here at Texas A&M. We have others who are serving in their local schools and after school programs, coordinating those opportunities, consulting in both the private sector and in the public sector. Uh, policy and protocol development. Um, how do you take information, take a desired outcome, and develop policies and protocols for organizations and for government? And then how do you apply them uh, to, to benefit the community or benefit the state or benefit the nation? We do have people working in investigations, uh, both criminal investigations, social equity investigators, people working and advocating for those types of things. Uh, nonprofit managers, um, managers of legislative offices or for different programs and projects. And then also we've got people who are serving as researchers and specialists for a variety of policy fields, including education policy, health policy, um, uh, hope and security policy, <clears throat> cyber security, all of those types of things. And that's just a sampling of what it looks like. So you may be wondering now, okay, what are the organizations that these individuals are working for? And so some of the organizations that our graduates go to work for uh, include the American Cancer Society, Habitat for Humanity. Now we've had graduates who've worked for Habitat both here locally in Texas and then also in other states and have done some work with them internationally. Um, all of the intelligence agencies that you can probably think of, my guess is we've had a graduate go to work for them, U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, and related organizations like Comonix and DevEx and other places like that, um, the U.S. Departments of Defense, State, Homeland Security, uh, I saw a post from someone, one of our graduates this morning on LinkedIn about her work at the U.S. International Trade Commission and saw another post from another graduate from last year who just took a job um, as, a, as a policy and program manager for an engineering company. And we've got graduates who are working in the Texas legislature, and this is actually a picture um, of some of our graduates who served in our legislative capstone a couple of years ago over in Austin, the Texas state legislature meets every other year. And so every other year we're able to send a group of second year MPSA students to go work for either Congress uh, representatives or Senate uh, senators uh, within the state of Texas and work in their offices and do research and then also contribute to the work that they're doing. City of Houston is just one example. We've got graduates who are working in a number of different locations uh, including in state government, like the New York governor's office. We have one who graduated last year who just went to work for the state of Rhode Island. As you see here, state of Maryland, 
uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, a government contractor, Ernst & Young, Accenture. So those are all places that our graduates are going when they finish up their graduate degrees in both public and international affairs. So the question is, how do you get to those employment places? How do you make sure that you are successful in your job search? Um, and the way that you go about doing that is that you are utilizing the school resources that are available to you. So at the Bush School, we have a public service leadership program, and that's led by Holly Casper Bauer. In that program, she is helping you understand more about yourself. So that typically starts off by her leading you as a first year student through Myers Briggs type indicator, uh, Strengths Finder, and helping you identify your personality type, and then also helping you identify your top strengths. That information is then used as you look forward in the career applications that you have. Right? How do I apply that also in group projects that I'm working in? And then our writing program also comes along beside you and they won't edit your papers for you, but they can help you think through how do I structure my writing? How do I strengthen my writing skills? We have a number of research institutes, centers, and programs to include the Scowcroft Institute for International Affairs, the Albritton Center for Grand Strategy, the Center for Nonprofits and Philanthropy, and the Institute for Science, Technology, and Public Policy. And all of those centers have unique opportunities for our students to engage. Now, I will say that most of the students that engage in the work of these centers are interested in enhancing their research skills. Great for someone who wants to go into one of those research positions that we just talked about a couple of slides ago, but also really important for anybody who might think about an additional graduate degree, maybe a PhD in public administration, public policy, international affairs, some of those types of things. Um, we are seeing a return this year to actually having in-person speakers and conferences and events, although we still have a good mix of both virtual and in-person events. Last year, everything was virtual as it was across the, uh, across the globe. And so we're having the opportunity to have individuals come in. Just last week, we had one of our former deans um, and former ambassador to a number of Middle Eastern countries, Ryan Crocker, uh, and uh, one of our faculty members, uh, Andrew Natsios, who also used to be USAID administrator, they both spoke about what's going on in Afghanistan right now um, and the reality of, of what's happening as a result of uh, the U.S. Um, withdrawal from Afghanistan. So really invigorating conversations. That was a virtual event. Um, but then we also have uh, live events with Jean Becker, who was President Bush's chief of staff and recently wrote a book about her time working with President and Mrs. Bush. We have networking opportunities with our alumni and guests. And if you have the opportunity if you apply to the, to the Bush School and you have the opportunity to attend any of our in-person interview conference activities, you'll have the opportunity to hear from our alumni who are coming in and sharing about their work experiences post-graduation. Uh, we have an event this weekend, our public service weekend, and it's a virtual event. And we have our alumni joining us virtually from across the country uh, to share about their experiences. So you get an opportunity to hear directly from the people who are working in public and international affairs. And I, I can tell you a lot about career options in this field, and I can tell you about the possibilities that exist. But our graduates, our alumni, are the ones who can tell you the nuances of applying for the State Department uh, opportunities or applying to um, a legislative position or a nonprofit organization or any other, other career resources or career opportunities that present themselves. And you can see here, although we haven't been able to take an international trip the last couple of years, this is a group of our students several years ago. Uh, who took a trip overseas. We do have international travel opportunities uh, when global health allows that. And so we hope to be able to, to incorporate that again in the coming future. For those of you interested in the International Affairs Program, you are probably already aware that one of the requirements of that degree is to pass an oral language exam. And in order to help you do that, we have a couple of different resources that we provide to you one, we have access to online Rosetta Stone training that you can use um, on an individual basis, and that's offered to you at no cost. And then we also have language groups, and we typically try to find someone who is a native speaker 
or a fluent speaker of the language that you're interested in. And we have them come in and lead those language groups, in-person language groups, so that you can utilize your skills because that language exam that you take is not a written exam, it's an oral exam. So it's you speaking the language. And so we wanna help you do the best that you can to prepare for that opportunity. I mentioned earlier an internship requirement. Students in the International Affairs Program can also opt to take a, a language immersion between their first and second year in, uh, instead of the internship. So that is another language resource that you have available to you. And then finally, um, oh, and the picture up at the top right hand corner there, Kyle, one of our students, that's him studying Korean with one of our tutors who was there. Um, and then down in the bottom left hand corner is a picture of one of our graduates in front of the George Bush Presidential Library. Um, Melissa was here uh, as a student and now works for the US federal government. Um, but we also have opportunities for student activities. We have a Bush School Student Government Association, uh, Bush School Ambassadors Program. They serve as the hosts at all of our events. So they uh, interact with uh, individuals who come in for that event, for the speakers. They usually have an opportunity to interact with them as well. We have a Bush School Public Service Organization and they schedule regular service activities to the community, including working for the local food bank, working in the local school districts, um, and other things like that. Um, and then we also have some other auxiliary organizations, Alexander Hamilton Society, which is a nationwide organization, but we have a chapter here at Texas A&M that's very active at the Bush School. Um, and those are some other opportunities, European Horizons Group, um, also people for people who are interested specifically in issues related to the EU. So we encourage you to take advantage of those school resources. In addition to those resources, we like to point out also that we have career services staff that will help you. So we do that in a couple of ways. Um, I've worked here at the Bush School for 18 years. I started here in career services and, and then have had the opportunity to you know, delve into some other areas, including recruiting and admissions, leadership development, and others with the team that works with us. But from career services standpoint, I still work with students individually. Plus we have two other staff members. Marilyn Santi Esteban is our Assistant Director for Career Programming. She runs a series of six career workshops in the first year for our graduate students. And if you attend all six of those career workshops, then you can also apply for supplemental funding for any unpaid internships, uh, for an unpaid internship that you might complete between your first and second year. That funding can also be used for a language immersion if you're in the International Affairs Program, but it does require that you attend those six career workshops in the fall of your first year. So we're just wrapping those workshops up right now. Um, I guess they wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. And as part of that, you're going to turn in a resume that will be reviewed, a LinkedIn profile and summary statement. We're going to have you go through some exercises uh, on networking and on negotiating an opportunity as, as those offers get made to you. Um, the other thing that we have is, uh, the other uh, staff member we have is Michael Cochran, and he's our Assistant Director for Employer Relations. Michael is the one who interfaces with all employers who want to post jobs or internships at the Bush School. He is also the person that schedules the opportunities for employers to get in front of our students. They're uh, typically at lunchtime information sessions, and those are both in person and virtually. Uh, one of the things that the pandemic, positive things that came out of the pandemic is a number of public organizations, public sector organizations that didn't really do a lot of external recruiting, really enhanced their external recruiting because they can do so virtually. And they're still doing that this year. There are a number of organizations that like to do in-person recruiting, and those organizations still come here. The CIA has been here, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, Defense Intelligence Agency, some local government entities from here in the Bryan College Station area. Bryan College Station are the two cities that Texas A&M sits in, um, and so there are opportunities for that as well. We also love to meet with you individually because as much information as we can provide to you, uh, to the group in large group information sessions, we really like to be able to meet with you individually because that's where we can get into 
putting you in touch with individual alumni who are working in the field that you're interested in and who can help you understand the nuances of that job sector. I know I mentioned that earlier, but John, I hope that this gets to answering your question. We like, we know our alumni and we like to connect you with this, them individually. So by meeting with one of us, you can come in and tell us what your interests are. And then we're going to either reach out to those alumni and ask if we can put them in touch with you or we're going to put them directly in touch with you. For those that are working in security sensitive positions, we always ask before we just give you contact information. But those working in other areas, federal government, outside of the security or intelligence field, um, state government, local government, nonprofit organizations, those people we put you in touch with directly and let you run with that information and reach out to them. And our alumni are very happy to help you as you think through those things. So keep that in mind um, as you come to a graduate program, you wanna find out, do they have the ability to connect you with former students who are able to help you and give you information in, in that situation? Um, we can do that by meeting with you individually. I've mentioned the career workshops. We also strongly encourage you to send us your cover letters, your resumes after they've been tailored for a specific position. I always ask students if you're gonna send me your resume and cover letter, send me a link to the position description. Make sure that you're tailoring your resume to it. And we're gonna teach you how to do that in that series of six career workshops in the fall semester. So you'll have the skills to do that. You'll have the ability to do that. We have a number of career interest groups and these are actually led by our students reason we have them led by our students is because as a group, those students can tell us who are the employers you want to hear from, who are the employers that you'd like to see either on campus or in virtual information sessions, who do you want us to reach out to, and so we're able to do those types of things. That's really important in a broad field like nonprofit management. Nonprofit organizations exist across the world. So the question becomes, which nonprofit organizations should we reach out to? Well, we're gonna to go to the career interest group and we're gonna have those conversations. We are also very fortunate, I mentioned the research institutes and research centers earlier, when using the nonprofit management example again, our Center for Nonprofits and Philanthropy does an amazing job of helping us stay connected to employers who know about graduate students at the Bush School and also help us get information to nonprofit organizations who should be recruiting graduates from the Bush School and who should be recruiting our students for internships. We do have networking events. If you go to Washington DC for your summer internship, we always have, the Dean always has an internship and alumni networking session. Uh, one evening in the summer. Uh, we try to provide those opportunities as well. I mentioned the Texas Legislative Capstone Group. When that is first getting started in the spring semester every other year, we try to have a networking reception for that as well. Um, again, when global health conditions allow, we weren't able to do that this last year, um, but we want to have those opportunities to give you a chance to not only meet people, but also to practice and refine your networking skills as you move forward in your career search. And then we also encourage you have conversations not only with the career services staff members, but also with your faculty advisors, with second year students who maybe just completed internships in the field that you're interested in, and then those former students that we can connect you with. And I've already mentioned the funding here. The only additional information I'll provide is that Again, this funding is supplemental to the scholarship funding that you may have heard Catherine present about in a previous workshop, recruiting workshop. So this is an opportunity for you to get additional funding, attend the six career workshops, and if your internship is unpaid or if you're doing a language immersion, you can qualify for $750 if you're doing a non-metropolitan um, internship, but domestically here in the United States. So if you were to stay here in the Bryan College Station area, you qualify for that. If you're going to a major metropolitan area in the state of Texas, you can qualify up to, for up to $1,500. If you're going to a major metropolitan area outside of the state of Texas, so places like Chicago, New York, Washington, DC, you can qualify for up to $2,000. And then if you're doing either an internship or a language immersion internationally, you can qualify for up to $2,500.
I'm going to check the chat real quick here. Great questions, Katie and Luis. Uh, I hope that I've answered your question, Luis. Um, uh, Katie, yes, we've had students who have gone into uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, and no, I'm not joking. I'm not making a joke about the NBC TV show. Uh, we actually do have a former student who worked here in Bryan, Texas. Um, and was manager of that for a period of time. And then now he's actually down in a suburb of Houston doing the same thing, uh, but has moved up into, wanted to move into a larger vicinity or a larger community um, in order to enhance the role that he does. So yes, we actually do have people who've done Parks and Rec who've graduated from our public administration program. We have had some other people who have done um, conservation internships or conservation jobs outside of that. So if you're interested in environmental issues in addition to that, then there are graduates who've gone into those fields as well. Um, in case you're not familiar with where we are here in Bryan College Station, I've mentioned the community to you. We're in a really great location, uh, central location for outreach. So again, great opportunities for you to do an internship locally. We have a number of state agencies who are here in Bryan College Station that are affiliated with Texas A&M University. We have a number of, we have a number of smaller communities here, Bryan and College Station are the two larger cities. And we've got students who always intern each summer for both the city of College Station and the city of Bryan. You'll see there's a little town south of College Station called Navasota. We've also had students who've interned there the last couple of years and the director of economic development is actually a Bush School graduate. You can see we're not very far from San Antonio, Austin, Waco, Dallas, and then Houston. So we're really in that triangle. It's not the Golden Triangle. Golden Triangle is over a little bit further east um, on the other side of Houston, but we do have a number of great opportunities for you here. Um, and then if you wanna go outside of the state of Texas as well, that's um, an opportunity for you to do that as well. So you may be wondering, okay, so you've talked about opportunities in general, but tell me how successful graduate students are at the Bush School. Um, we will report out our 2021 statistics, employment statistics in January, try to get that out uh, by mid to late January, knowing that we have interview conference coming up in mid-February this year. We do that in conjunction with our other NASPA and APSIA colleagues, those are the other graduate programs in public and international affairs, we have all agreed to post our employment statistics at the very least at six months post-graduation. We do that because the, the public sector tends to do what we call just-in-time hiring. You can imagine that a nonprofit organization that has applied for grant funding for specific programs, as soon as they get that funding, they're ready to hire someone but they won't know that six months in advance. Typically, they won't know if they've been awarded the grant six months in advance, so they can't recruit that far out. They may know a month in advance of when they need someone to work there. Same thing at the federal level, a very different kind of example, but the federal government, if there are things that are going on in the world of national security, then the way that the federal government is hiring in the places that they're hiring is gonna change dramatically. You can imagine after something like 9-11 that federal government hiring shifted largely to the national security sector. So the departments of defense, the intelligence agencies, at the time, Homeland Security didn't exist. The Department of Homeland Security was stood up after that. So you can imagine why we post at six months post-graduation. But we do very well. We typically have between an 85 and 90% response rate. And our employment rate at six months post-graduation ranges from 81 to 96% employed within six months of graduating. Why such a large range? Well, if you look at our international affairs programs, we don't consider them employed, officially employed, until they're actually on the job. So if they've been given a conditional offer of employment, but are waiting on a security clearance, or they've taken the foreign service exam, and they are waiting to get their A100 class, which is their orientation class assignment, then until they actually start that, we don't consider them employed. So that's why in that international affairs program, you see the employment rates are more in the 80 to 90% range. 
but in public administration, they're typically in the 88 to 96 percent employment range within six months post graduation. So you can see here the past couple of years, and all of this information is under prospective students. Um, if you look under prospective students on our website, bush.tamu.edu, you can find additional employment statistics and also a list of places where our students have interned in the past. But you can see in public administration, the three primary areas where our students go to work when they graduate are in state and local government, nonprofit organizations, and the federal government. This particular year, last year, a little bit more hiring in the private sector and a little bit higher percentage of students going into continuing ed, either a PhD program or law school. In very rare occasions, maybe an additional master's degree. I think if you look across the country, really across the world, you saw a number of people continuing their education in 2020 instead of going directly into the workplace because that was in the middle of the pandemic. So organizations were still figuring out if they were going to be hiring, what did that look like? And so that was something that, that, had to, that has to be taken into consideration. In the International Affairs Program listed under MIA, you can see that the top employer there is actually the federal government. And that's pretty consistent. If you look in 2019, the class of 2019, 44% uh, were going to work for the federal government. And then if you add the government contractor below that, you're at 56% because those government contractors are almost exclusively federal government contractors. Same thing with the class of 2020, you add that 5% on, so you're at 46% going to work for the federal government in the United States. Nonprofit organizations a little bit smaller in the international affairs program, but state and local government in 2020, there was a, some more hiring going on at the state level than there was at the federal level. So we saw a little bit of an uptick in the number of graduates going to work for state and local government and still doing security work. Um, here in Texas, for example, we have the Texas Department of Public Safety. They have an intelligence division. So we have some students who've gone to work for them in the intelligence, in an intelligence analyst role. Those others down at the bottom, anytime we have other, that typically means someone who decided to go back to a previous career field. So maybe someone who was an educator and they chose to go back into the education field uh, or someone who decided that they wanted to do something on their own, start a business on their own, be entrepreneur entrepreneurially minded. Um, and so that's something that they are doing um, as they graduate from our program. I'm gonna check my chat here real quick. And just make sure, great. You're welcome, Katie. Um, sample internships and language immersions in the summer, uh, in each of the summers of 2019 and 2020, we had about 175 first year students who helped us, who we were able to help in career services. Summer of 2020 was interesting to say the least. I think that's a pretty common word um, as you look at uh, across graduate programs, really across higher education. Uh, a number of our students had internships that were converted to virtual internships. Last summer, the summer of 2021, that we just came out of, we had a number of students who were actually able to travel internationally for language immersions. Not all of the places that they wanted to go opened up. For example, we had some students who planned to study Arabic in some Middle Eastern countries that last minute they had to shift and go to Jordan, uh, still in the Middle East, but just not where they had originally planned to go. So we are still referring back to the summer of 2019, which, which was the last, what I would call normal summer for internships and language immersions. But you can see uh, the countries that they went to uh, for our international internships and international language immersions. And then you can see for public service and administration, some of the state and local internships were here locally in the city of Bryan, also Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, McAllen, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Palm Beach, Florida, Santa Monica, California, and Shelby County, Tennessee. In addition to the state of Washington, uh, I'd love to go to the state of Washington in the summer, uh, get away from the Texas heat. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the Texas A&M University system is a state agency itself. And so we have a number of state agencies like the Texas Engineering Extension Service. We also have Texas Agriculture Extension Service, Texas A&M Forest Service. And we've had students who are working for all of those agencies in the past. Nonprofit organizations, you can see a sample of them here. The Capital Area Food Bank is over in Austin, Texas. 
Dallas Holocaust Museum. One Star Foundation is a foundation over in Austin. YMCA of Middle Tennessee. We had a, a student at the time who was from Tennessee and went back home that summer and worked as an intern there. Federal agencies, you can see a number of them. We also had some students who went over to Wales and worked for the Welsh General Assembly and the UK Parliament. That's actually a unique program we have with Swansea University, which is located in Wales. They go, students who participate in that program go and do two weeks of classes at Swansea University in their graduate program in public administration, public policy. Um, and then they go do a, a four week internship with either the Welsh General Assembly, the UK Parliament, or a nonprofit there in Swansea, Wales. And then they come back and they do two more weeks in classes. So it's an eight week internship and education experience during the summer that counts as their summer internship. And then some of the international organizations you can see listed there, Organization of American States, Atlantic Council, CSIS. So great places. And that was just the Public Service and Administration Department. For international affairs, you can see a, a large number of federal agencies here, several that I've already mentioned. In addition to that, we've had students over the last several summers going to work for Sandia National Lab, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, Los Alamos National Lab. So a number of the national labs have really opened up to the work that we're uh, that our students are doing in international affairs. U.S. military commands like European Command, Pacific Command, Southcom and Northcom. A uh, number of our students go do internships for the Department of State, both in Washington, D.C. and abroad. Departments of Defense and Energy. Department of Energy is largely in the nuclear arena, uh, nuclear nonproliferation. They have a really strong program in that that is, has been really great to us and to our students for both internships and jobs. U.S. Trade Representative, uh, German Defense Ministry, state government. Here's one of those examples of a national security issue or a security issue, I should probably say. Um, and that's the Texas Attorney General's Human Trafficking Section. You know, there's a, there's a lot of work going on in this area um, at both the state level, even the local level. Um, to some extent, if you look at places like Houston and Austin and Waco and Dallas, Fort Worth, because there's a corridor, an interstate corridor um, that, that human trafficking occurs in pretty regularly. So there's been a lot of work in that area. And some of our students have been able to intern for those places. International think tanks, some of the same ones that we just mentioned a few minutes ago, in addition to places like the Inter-American Foundation, United Nations, Georgian Mission, um, and then private sector opportunities as well. Some of those are gonna look really familiar to you. Uh, BP Global is British Petroleum Global. Um, KPMG, probably pretty familiar with Pricewaterhouse, Cooper's Accenture, Ernst & Young. And then we have some others like SRI Consulting, which are smaller. Um, and then you have immersion, immersive language study in these other uh, countries and in these languages. So finally, having taken your experience as a student here in your first year, learning about yourself through our leadership development program, exploring your career options, looking at internship or language immersion opportunities, completing that language immersion and that or that internship opportunity, then you come back and in your second year, you do an additional professional experience. And this is in place of a traditional master's thesis program. So we don't have a thesis that students go through here. Many of you probably know that. Instead, we have a capstone project. For public administration, this is a year-long capstone project, an academic year-long capstone project, working for a real-world client. And then for international affairs, it's a one semester capstone project. So their project is only one semester where public administration is two. This is just a sampling of the organizations that you might get to do a capstone for. And the great thing about these opportunities is that this is really the culmination of what you've learned in your first year and what you're learning in your second year in addition to what you've already begun to apply through your summer internship between your first and second year. So this is an opportunity, we view this in career services as an opportunity to think beyond just what job am I going to get and think about what knowledge, skills, and abilities am I going to get to develop as I think about my capstone project. So we encourage you to take some time to think about those things. What did I learn in my internship? What did I learn in my um, projects for my first year. 
And then what else do I need to learn? What skills do I need to develop? What knowledge do I need to enhance before I get into my first job? And so your capstone presents an opportunity to do that. And so you'll see some well-known organizations here, the CIA, Congressional Research Service, the FBI, U.S. Government Accountability Office, some of the same names that you've seen come up before at the state level, Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, Texas Department of Public Safety, um, Texas Legislature, Railroad Commission, State, Com state Comptroller's Office, local government, New Orleans, City of New Orleans or Business Council of New Orleans and the River Region, Brazos Valley Council of Governments, Caddo Parish Sheriff's Office, that's actually also Caddo Parish is in Louisiana. We have a former student who's the spokesperson for Caddo Parish and helped us make a great connection to do some work for them. City of Bryan, College Station, Houston, Galveston Area Council, nonprofit organization, Alzheimer's Association of Houston, Educate Texas, the Greater Texas Foundation. And again, you see some others that are gonna be familiar to you. And then we've also done capstone projects for private clients like Accenture, Stratfor, and the Rand Corporation. So plenty of opportunities for you to continue to apply what you're learning and also continue to develop and enhance the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you need for your first professional job out of graduate school. So we're going to go back to what John asked about at the beginning, although we've talked about networking. We strongly encourage you to take advantage of every networking opportunity you have. We are really proud of our Bush School Network and our alumni, we have just over 2,300 graduates of our uh, Master of International Affairs, Master of International Policy, Master of Public Service and Administration programs. And we're adding more degree programs to that through our Washington DC teaching site. We'll launch a new Master of National Security next year. And so we'll continue to see uh, that number go up. But our alumni, are very invested in what we do here. They want to help you. They like to help our current students. They want to get to know you. And so we're gonna connect you to those as often as we can have the opportunity to do so. In addition to the Bush School Network, you also have the larger Aggie Network. And if you're not from Texas A&M University or didn't do your undergraduate here, or don't know anyone who has done their undergraduate here, then let me just tell you that the Aggie Network is strong and proud. and They love helping other Aggies. And as a Bush School student, you come into that Aggie Network. Um, right now we have over, last time I looked, we have over 500,000 living alumni who are actively involved um, in a variety of different ways uh, at the university, but we can put you in touch with them if we can't find a Bush School graduate who is able to help you, or if it just, if we need to put you in touch with them to help out with that. I also strongly encourage you to engage with your undergraduate institutions network. Um, there are a number of really strong networks out there um, you know, you can find out if you have a strong alumni network at your undergraduate institution, take advantage of that. Um, the Aggie Network can also help you with finding A&M clubs in your region. If you apply to the Bush School and you get accepted in the spring, look and see if you can find the A&M club in your area. And then go to one of their meetings and let them know that you just got accepted to the graduate school at, at Texas A&M and you're coming here because that's going to be really helpful for you in just continuing to make those networking contacts. And then the Aggie Network, which is uh, managed by the Association of Former Students, also has career services available. You can also create online accounts to track with other people. Um, but we also are here to help you for your lifetime at the Bush School in your career search. Encourage you, if you haven't already done so, make sure you check out our website, bush.tamu.edu. I mentioned there are employment statistics and more internship information on there. That's also what, where we will post our class of 2020 employment statistics. Um, Texas A&M University, you can go to their website, to our website as a university as well. Um, and you can find more information about the community there, but we also have some community information at the Bush School, I will say one of the unique things about us here is that because we are a graduate program in public and international affairs, we know our students well and we try to create uh, a community environment. And so you'll have the opportunity to interact with others in our programs as well. And then also if you have specific questions about recruiting or admissions, 
reach out directly to Catherine Meyer, our director of recruiting and admissions, or Ashley Treadway, our assistant director for admissions. Um, they are going to be the two people that you interface with most as you apply. And then if you have specific career services questions, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm um, Upton at tanu.edu. Um, I let me know that you were on this webinar today if you are reaching out to me so that I know that you've already received some information and then I answer your question a little bit differently. And I'm going to check the chat one more time. I see we've got a couple of things in there. And then if you have anything that you want to ask, throw it in the chat real quick and I'll get to it. Um, great. It looks like we're just getting thank yous and I appreciate that. Um, so I'll wait just a second here. And if anybody does, if you don't have any more questions, um, then you are welcome to hop off the webinar. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for your patience as I try to get my slideshow to work the way I wanted it to. And um, we're happy to help in any way that we can. We hope to see your application come in. I know application deadline priority is coming up in December and we'd love to see you here for interview conference weekend. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks so much.